Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today, we're really looking forward to speaking with Aileen Horgan, the VP of Marketing at Gremlin. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Let's you know, jump right in. And uh, I want to ask about Gremlin's first ever State of Chaos Engineering Report that was just released. Uh, obviously, Gremlin's been doing a lot of evangelism you know, over the last five years. Uh, what have you seen recently in terms of adoption? So, uh, you know, what spurred this was an uptick in interest from the larger community. Uh, a couple of years ago, we launched a Slack community to bring chaos engineering practitioners together so they can share tips, tricks, best practices, job postings that, you know, were related to chaos engineering. That has close to 7,000 members in it today. Um, our chaos engineering conference that we launched three years ago has had a couple hundred registrants for the last few years. And in 2020, we had over 3,500 people register. So there were a lot of signals to us that the um, interest in chaos engineering was pretty high. So we decided to, to run a larger survey to our customer base, but also expanding outside of just the Gremlin four walls so that we could look a little bit more holistically at what, what, what the community was, was seeing. Um, and that's that's the sort of impetus for, for the report. Um, a couple of interesting findings that um, I think would be worth sharing in terms of adoption is that 60% of those that responded had run at least one chaos engineering attack, um, which, you know, I think was somewhat about what we expected. We expected more than half, but so that was, that was a, a good barometer. And then looking at our own customer data, we, um, we discovered that uh, our, our users had executed close to half a million um, attacks over the last four or so years since the product has been in, in production. Um, and that number of attacks executed has doubled year over year from 2019 to 2020. So I think there's a, a lot of interest both from the community side as well as uh, you know the actual implementation or, or action in product to, to test systems. That's that's impressive numbers. So I'm glad to hear the adoptions actually you know matching all the hype. Uh, yeah. I I imagine for many companies it's hard to convince them to, you know, put in the upfront effort. Do you think the analogy of encouraging people to exercise makes sense? Uh, how do you convince people that the return is worth it versus not doing chaos engineering at all? Yeah, uh, great question. So I think the exercise analogy works. The one that we use more frequently and is actually quite timely is that of a vaccine where you inject a little bit of harm to build immunity, right? So the, the idea behind chaos engineering is that you thoughtfully inject failure into systems, observe how they respond and address those before they become detrimental customer experiences. Um, so that's that's the analogy I think we, we more often use. Um, so how do you convince people it's worth investing in? Well, we've got to show them the, the value of, of running chaos engineering experiments. Um, the report validated a lot of what we have been saying and evangelizing, which is that it leads to increased availability and re a reduction in mean time to resolution. Gartner has published similar reports, but it was great to actually see this validated from the larger community. So I'll give you um, some specifics. So teams who frequently, and by frequently, I mean weekly or more often, run chaos engineering experiments, have three nines or higher of availability. And the, the survey respondents shared that more than 40% of them have an MTTR mean time to resolution of under an hour and 70% of under 12 hours. So those are impressive feats in and of themselves. So we're hopeful that by being able to, to share those types of numbers that it drives more um, teams to think about thoughtful testing, proactive, proactive failure testing. But to your point about, you know, how do you convince them um, getting people to adopt a new way of working is hard. Um, I think about agile practices, right? The, the agile manifesto was written like 20 years ago now, but the, at that time, the idea of working and operating in sprints and shipping, you know, maybe an incomplete air quotes, right? Piece of functionality or feature, observing how your users um, consumed it and then iterating on it was unheard of, but that has become extremely common for, for teams, engineering teams of all sizes, you know, so much so that there are 
um, agile at scale methodologies. So um, I believe that chaos engineering will reach that level of ubiquity in the testing in the testing field. And then I guess a couple more specific questions on the report itself. Um, I'm always curious when people do those types of things, were there any unexpected, you know, findings from the report that you might want to share? And then, uh, you know, which industries from the report are you finding are adopting chaos engineering and which technologies are people running attacks against? Sure. Um, so half of our respondents were from software and services industry, which I think is was to be expected. A quarter from banking and um, financial institutions. And then actually one of the things that surprised me most was how few were from e-commerce and retail. It was less than 10%. And given the birthplace of chaos engineering being, you know, Amazon and um, and Netflix, that I expected that to be much higher. Um, I think um, in terms of the technology, to, to answer the second part of the question, about 70% were running um, attacks in Kubernetes, which we hear a lot about in, in the field or you know in the industry, but um, being able to say that that teams are actually running against those types of containers was, you know, or, or in different environments like Kubernetes was, was pretty interesting. 60% um, also were running in cloud, production environments. Um, so I think that also speaks to the fact that there is this larger digital transformation movement that's happening across a variety of industries. And then, you know, in 2020, resilience was a big theme. I think that's going to continue, obviously, in 2021. Uh, a lot of companies have moved online and embraced modernization, perhaps even faster than they originally planned. Has Gremlin seen an uptick in the interest for chaos engineering since the pandemic? Yeah, great question. Um, within our own customer base, many have reported Black Friday like traffic spikes um, for random Mondays, you know, almost like on a daily basis. So um, because of that shift to more online, um, um, much more of an online presence across a variety of industries. When I first started at Gremlin just a few months ago, I had the opportunity to talk to a variety of different customers as well as those that were evaluating um, our platform. And one, um, one conversation really stood out to me and that was from a, a very small shop who was in the food service industry. They had a platform that was building um, online um, um, purchasing, like you could basically do online um, restaurants, right? So, so how do you, how do you buy your meals online, right? And they were saying, we've seen spikes in traffic that we've never seen even for holidays or rainy days, right? When, when people are just at home requesting um, um, food delivery. So that I think to me highlights that the the industry as a whole um, in terms of the software space is, is, is changing. And a lot of what we've been evangelizing is becoming more common in conversations. Um, so I think the last point there is when people do come to Gremlin, it's no longer what is chaos engineering, it's how do I get started? And then one of the things we have going on right now uh, at VM Blog, we're running a prediction series. Uh, and I'm curious, you know, what are some of the trends that you expect to see in chaos engineering throughout the year going forward? So I think to my last point, I think that we'll see broad, more broader adoption across a, a wide range of industries wide range of industries, especially as more move online. Um, I expect to see smarter recommendations. If we have a good sense of what your environments are, we should, you know, we being the, the, the tooling providers, be able to better predict and help you understand what and where to test against. And I think the other piece is around automation. We, we have an opportunity to be, you know, more embedded as part of the build pipeline. And I understand uh, that in order to meet demand, Gremlins decided recently to unlock its entire library of attacks. That seems like a you know pretty generous gesture. Uh, what's the driving force behind that decision? It's pretty simple. The the interest and demand is there. We previously on our free plan limited to um, three different sort of uh, categories: resource, state, and network um, attack types. And network, and this is. Uh, um, shown in our report, network attacks are the most popular um, form of attacks. And within those 
within our paid customer base, latency attacks were the second most popular. And those were a type of attack that we didn't previously offer to our free, free plan users. And so we, we kind of had an honest conversation with ourselves, which was, why are we gating on the types of attacks and experiments that customers can run? Should we not allow them to um, run experiments across their entire stack and maybe look at different ways of gating, which is maybe the number of attacks they run monthly or something, right? So we just said, to help people start with the foundations of chaos engineering, let's kind of get out of their way and make sure that they can test against, test availability and resiliency against their entire stack. Uh, well, I wanna thank you for joining you know, us today at VMblog and providing such great information. Uh, I know viewers are gonna to wanna to learn more. So where can they go if they wanna take a deeper dive into any of the different topics that we've uh, talked about today? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking that. So we just published our report, gremlin.com slash state of chaos engineering slash 2000 2021. Um, that's the best place to, to go download the report. And then for our free plan, you can just go onto our website, um, gremlin.com slash uh, get started and, and, and drop right into the planet, uh, right into the platform itself. Cool. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll make sure to put those links in the uh text at the bottom of the, uh, the video and hopefully uh, everybody watching will be able to go check that out. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, well, thank you again. Appreciate your time today. Yeah, you bet, All thanks. Right.